Thanks, Mike. Really appreciate it. Uh, I want to start out by saying um, welcome. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, depending what part of the country you are in right now. And uh, thank you all very much for uh, supporting AFONE's products. And I, I hope everyone is, is safe, healthy, and, and just remaining so busy uh, in these times today. Um, today, for this, this webinar, we're going to go, th uh, go through a review of um, AFONE's mobile app solutions, uh, including a, our new product that got released April 1st, the IXG multi-tenant um, uh, solution we have. We'll have questions and answers when, when we're through um, that we'll be glad to review with you, but please know that um, your A-phone reps are readily available uh, after this session and ongoing forward with any questions you may have, in-person demonstrations on the products, and any additional training you would need. And if anyone needs to know uh, who their A-phone rep is, contact their A-phone rep, please visit our website and uh, under um, sales and you can find uh, regionally where, who your uh, A-phone rep would be. Um, so with that said, I am going to turn this over to uh, John Hemp. He is our Mid-Atlantic Regional Sales Director uh, who is going to be talking you through some of our mobile app solutions. Uh, John? Hey everybody. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with our IX series. The IX series is our, it does encompass our mobile apps. It's also IP and the IXG fits into that. And like Steve said, we are going to cover both today and kind of talk about some of the things that we're getting phone calls on uh, throughout the country. Obviously with things getting ready to open back up, uh, some of you might be opened already, but we're opening slowly here in the Northeast. There's, there's a lot of concern of a lot of companies in the commercial vertical, healthcare, schools, where they want to control how many people they're letting in their building at one time and, and how, they're, how they're communicating with visitors. So obviously, AFONE has been in that space and a leader in that space for many, many years. And I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have heard of AFONE before. But we're going to drill down a little bit on the IX series and the IX platform and kind of go through some of the features, um, how, what the system's capable of, uh, what it can integrate with, so that as you run into these solutions and you're, you're talking to your, your end user clients or, or you know, whoever else you're, you're dealing with, you'll be able to, to at least know where to steer the conversation and how the product works so that you'll be able to recognize the opportunities too as they come through. So first things first, the, um, let me get this thing's not moving here. There we go. The IX series is a peer to peer IP platform. So there is no rack mounted servers. There's no licensing uh, in the standard sense. Uh, when we get to the mobile app, we'll cover that again in multi-tenant, but there is no licensing fees for it being IP. So there is no single point of failure. And as long as you're getting these devices to a PoE switch, then you're in good shape. What you're looking at now is the IX MV7 master station or your answering station. You'll notice that one of them has a handset, one of them does not. So if, you're, if they want to have a private conversation, you definitely want to offer the one with a handset. Now, one, one thing you want to keep in mind, if you have a, a master station with a handset, you can remove it. But if you have a master station without a handset, you cannot add one. So most of the time, people are ordering the ones with the handset and deciding if they want to remove it or not. The, the MV7 is a seven inch touchscreen. You can have the speed, what we call speed dials which are down the side, which you can set up to call specific door stations or specific groups. So that if someone is communicating with a certain area of their business or school on a, uh, on a repeated level, they can set up to where it's just one touch. You'll notice too, that the master station has a video camera in the top of it. It has a 720p camera. It does have a privacy shutter. Now we've gotten some calls where some of these businesses want to be able to communicate video chat so that the visitor can see who they're talking to as well. So if you're getting requests for that, the IX2 will do that. So reach out to your A phone rep when you get an application like that and kind of run through it and they'll be able to steer you in the right direction to make sure you've got the right, you know, the right parts. Now you'll notice too, there is a picture in picture option if you look at the screen and we'll cover that too in just a second. There are some uh, outputs on the back of these masters. Okay, you have your paging output, of course. So not only can you communicate to specific door stations or groups of masters, 
but you can have this set up to be a paging system as well to where you can communicate to an entire building and you can also partition it to where if you, you know, a four story building, if you want to page to just floor one or just floor two, that's all done in the programming and you can partition it uh, as you see fit. There is a headphone jack there as well. So if you've got somebody that's on a computer, they can put in a headphone jack, you know, standard headset and be able to communicate from that master as well. These are our room stations. And if you think back through, you know, K through 12, when we were all in a, you know, elementary, middle school, and the office would call into the teacher's, you know, teacher's class and want to speak to the teacher to either pull somebody out or give them uh, some kind of a message. That's what this station was designed for. But it is an audio only answering station. You can also release a door from it if you choose to. It's not quite as robust as a master station. It's again, audio only, and it's, it's only going to dial out to what it's programmed to dial out to, whereas a master station, you do have full control. But it has the, um, the eight ohm speak paging outputs on it. And with this particular IX system, not just this RS station, but the system itself, it's capable to do announcements just like you would in that school, bell scheduling, um, anything that a K through 12 would wanna do. Um, you do have your trigger inputs and outputs on the back as well, so that you can trigger just about anything that can, that can go into a relay there. This is a grouping of our standard door stations. And you'll notice there's, there's four of them that are standard. Three of them are, are stainless steel and flush mount. You can get a back box and surface mount them if you choose. And then the one all the way to the right is the IXDV, which is our surface mount station. Uh, all of them have a 1.2 megapixel camera. We're all on with Profile S compliant, which means you can take these, these video streams and stream them into an NVR and it becomes another camera on the system. So if they want to record things or just kind of monitor that traffic and you're putting in CCTV or they've already got it there for even, you can go ahead and, and stream this video right in with everything else, provided that there's either open ports or licensing available on the NVR side. All these stations obviously are, are outdoor rated. Now, the next piece of equipment I'm going to show you is very, very new. And it's really just a picture of it. I'm not going to do a deep dive, but with today's climate, obviously everybody's concerned with touching things they don't have to touch and being able to make a phone call by just waving your hand in front of something instead of actually hitting the button. This is a, a sensor that will do exactly that. It'll tie into our IXDV door station. And if you have a, a customer that's reaching out to you looking for a touchless application, I recommend reaching out to your A-phone guy, your local rep, and let them know what you're working on because this part won't be in quick spec yet and it's very new. So ADI probably won't even have all the information on it just yet. So reach out to a phone. It, it will be available, I believe June, somewhere around June 6th or June 8th. So within the next, you know, seven to 10 days, this is something you'll be able to offer your clients and help them out with their concerns with uh, having touchless communication from visitors to their staff. The, the reader that's highlighted, or the station that's highlighted here, does have a built-in card reader. Okay, it's an HID RP10 reader. It does require a third-party host, meaning you have to have an access control system on site. So the reader is there built into the panel for aesthetics, but there is a wiring harness that comes off the back of that that you'll run to your access control. Now that reader obviously, or the access control system will have whatever credentials that that end user wants, and they'll be able to manage that just the same, but it prevents you from having to put multiple devices out at the, um, out at the entrance. If they are looking for something that's audio only and don't need a video camera, these are three of our audio only stations. Now, keep in mind this, the IX series, like I said, is, is IP based. So you can trigger if they have a, another camera, a surveillance camera that's already installed, you can set up a trigger to where when a station, when a button is pushed on an audio only, it calls up an existing surveillance camera. So a lot of that will depend on what kind of cameras they have in place. For instance, if they're using some kind of analog solution, you know, where it's still running to a DVR, you're going to have a hard time with that. You're going to need to have an IP, you know, camera solution in there and something that can, that can stream into an NVR, not a DVR. These are our emergency stations. 
the emergency stations you guys have seen before, I'm sure, on college campuses, schools, uh, they can come in wall boxes and towers, which we'll cover here in just a second. But you can get these also in audio only or audio video. We can do a single emergency call button or a double button. And again, depending on application. Sometimes people want these things in their, their parking garages or parking lots, and they want to have it called two different places. You know, it may not be an emergency. Maybe somebody just lost their car, needs some assistance. So again, all this stuff is application specific, and I would recommend reaching out to your A-phone rep if you're running into emergency, um, emergency projects so they can kind of help you put the parts list together. These are the wall boxes that these stations would fit into, and this is what most people see. And some people would think, obviously, it's all one piece, but it's not. You know, it's a station going inside of that box. Each of our boxes are UL listed, uh, the strobe light on top. And they are four inches off the wall, so they are going to meet ADA compliance. With the lettering on the side, you can choose whether you want to have assistance, emergency. And obviously, depending on how you're mounting it or where you're mounting it, you can either put the hood on top for the blue light or a cage so you can see it, you know, 360. So again, as you're putting these things together, there are a few options. If it's not going into a parking garage and you want to have this thing hit a tower or hit, hit a uh, campus, then you can put it into one of our towers. Now, the interesting thing about our towers versus some of the others is that they're modular. So you can build them as you need them, and they're a lot easier to install. If any of you guys have ever done emergency projects in the past, these towers can be kind of heavy when they're all one piece. They get flat bedded in, cherry picking cranes, and, and you need, you need a, a crew to really put them up. With our towers, they're cheaper to ship, and two guys basically can bolt these things together. Now you'll notice that you can put them in two, two levels or three levels, and you can, you can basically construct it any way you want. Now we can also give you a camera arm on the top to mount that third party uh, surveillance camera, whether it be a PTZ or something with a motorized zoom. Um, again, application specific, but whatever camera they wanna put up there, you can do that. And that's kind of where the picture in picture comes in, which again, we'll get to here in just a second. The iX2 is the second version of our iX platform, which has been out you know, for a few years now. Think of it the same way as cell phones, right? They upgrade every now and again. Some of you guys might have an iPhone 10, iPhone 9, what have you. So when the, when the iX2 was released, it is also SIP compatible. I don't know how many of you guys are used to dealing with SIP protocol and tying into IP PBXs, but the, the master stations are basically telephones, right? They can make phone calls, they can answer phone calls along with the internet traffic. So where that comes to play in some of these applications is people want as much real estate on their desk, right, as they can have. So they, they, if, they don't, if they can go without having a telephone and an intercom and just have one, a lot of times you'll get asked for that and the iX2 can do that. So again, we are Cisco certified. You can see that right there on the slide out of the box, but we do work with a lot of other um, systems as well. Again, I would, without drilling down too deep, if you have somebody telling, hey, I want to be able to make a phone call or I want this to tie into my, my telephone system, just reach out to your iPhone guy, let him know what you're dealing with, and he'll give you a parts list and, and kind of walk you through it to make it, uh, make it easier on you guys. This is a very elementary diagram on how it would control to an on-site PBX. So all of your master stations, your door stations, everything with the IX, it's PoE powered, right? It's all network, it's CAT5, CAT6, and you'll connect it into that on-site PBX. If there is not an on-site PBX, if they're using like a Comcast for business or Verizon, some kind of you know, internet provider, could be a small business and they don't have a true PBX. We do have one here at Aphone and we can furnish that so they can tie into their, their cloud-based um, SIP server. And again, it gets the, the parts and the pieces and how you put this together is a little too much to go into right now. But as you're seeing these applications come through, just reach out and, and our guys will definitely help walk you through it. We were talking about these third party cameras and streaming them in. And the, the system can take up to 500 third party cameras that can stream into that MV7, the master station. 
and you're basically creating address books in the programming on which cameras are called up when you know when a station is pushed or if you just want to monitor it from that master station and when we were talking about picture in picture that's kind of, that's where this comes into play a door station obviously is mounted to where it can see the person coming in right you're going to get that full face as they're coming into your building so that you can not only identify them but if you're recording it you've got that on, on your uh, nvr or on an sd card that you can mount into our master station but if you've got a surveillance camera up top or sometimes you might have a door with a you know and around the corner they want to make sure that no one's waiting there to come in with the person you let in you can have that third party camera take a, a much wider view of the area in some of these higher security applications. In order to toggle back and forth between picture and picture, you're basically just going to touch which image you want to see. And it'll toggle back and forth for you. All of that stuff is set up in the programming. So when you're when you're dealing with your end user and you're dealing with what application they're looking for, just find out which cameras and what it is they want to see and make sure again it's ip cameras they're on vfs and we could we should be able to stream those right in and, and get that taken care of the ix is has line supervision and device check so now you can without going to each station and testing it right pushing a button see if the communication works you can have it be done you know, uh, automatically, so to speak, where it's going to test the line to make sure that it, it's still operable. You still have a signal going back and forth. And it also check each device. And when it's checking that device, it's checking the microphone, the button, the, the speaker, the camera, making sure everything's working. If something's not working, you will get a message on that master station and it'll let you know that there's something wrong with that device, upon which time they can either, you know, call their integrator or or whoever it is they have on contract to come out and either fix or replace that part. But all of the IX, uh, the IX2 series has that, that uh, line supervision and device check. Now your, your speed dial functions. These get used a lot for a lot of different applications. You could have a receptionist that's calling into a principal, for instance, and they speak multiple times a day. So now they have a speed dial button set up for that person's office. We've even had it set up for your paging groups. And paging might be something as simple as, you know, calling uh, with an assisted living. A lot of times they have bus schedules and they do outings and day trips and they page the building when the bus has shown up or when, the, when they want to make an announcement to the entire building. So you can set this up as any kind of groups that you want to and partition it any way that, that the customer wants. What I've also seen this used for in our K through 12 environment is school resource officers uh, when it gets to the mobile app. And, and we'll get to that in just a second here when we start talking about the mobile apps. But if you have a, an emergency situation, you can page that out as well. And you can also initiate that page from the mobile app. So no matter where that resource officer is in the building, he can decide if he needs to trigger the next level of, of response. The speed dial functions can also set up a camera monitor or you can do scan monitoring, meaning you can kind of rotate through whatever, um, whatever stations you want to see. If you have certain, certain cameras or certain stations that are in high traffic areas or high security areas, or maybe you just want to see the, the school lunchroom because that's where problems arise, you know, more often than not. Well, whoever's in charge of the communication there can monitor those, those areas right there from the master station and they can scan, which you know, will rotate through however the images as they see fit. You can also have any kind of contact closures, of course. A phone's been, you know, synonymous with opening doors. So you can have trigger contacts there on that master to, to open a door as well. Or if you have it in a warehouse situation, they may want to trigger some kind of external sounder or bell if they're not always at the master station to be able to know that it's ringing and someone needs to pay attention to the door. So if as you're uh, running into these things, the, the IX series will encompass just about everything that you, you're going to run into. You can also upload custom sound files. Now, this is going to become more of an issue, I think, moving forward as well, when they're restricting people into their offices. Some of these folks are operating remotely at this point where there's no one in the office or it's a, or it's a skeleton crew. So you can upload a simple WAV file 
and it can have a message on there. It can be everything from please enter. The school is locked down like you see here, but you could also have a message on there saying the office is currently closed. Please contact, you know, that as long as that message uh, meets the parameters, which is simple wave file, 16 bit, the, the system will play it when that button's pushed. So again, talk to your, uh, to your end users and they'll be able to walk you, walk you through whatever it is they want that station to do. As far as your bell scheduling goes, mostly for schools, you can have up to 50 events per day and you can schedule them weekly or daily. Uh, you can also play pre-recorded announcements or pages. Now those pre-recorded announcements could be anything from lunch is ready to an emergency, right? If, if we've got people in the Midwest, you may deal with tornado emergencies. Uh, we've got people in Florida that deal with hurricanes. Um, everybody is always concerned, of course, with active shooter or some disgruntled parent comes in. So with those message plays, instead of having someone have to stay at the master and relay that message themselves, they can hit a button and have that automatic message play out and it'll repeat itself. So the, the person is not putting themselves in danger either. They can leave and go to the tornado shelter or wherever it is they have to go to. So not only is this intercom going to control the doors and be able to you know talk back and forth, but you can use it for a lot of different applications out there that come to emergency, paging, any kind of communication that you can think of. As far as transfers go, calls can be transferred from master station to master and even out to the mobile app. So when a call comes into the, from the door station to the master, that master can initially transfer that call to up to 10 different locations. And those 10 locations, whoever you know, gets the call first, if no one gets that, then each of those masters can transfer it to another destination up to 999 calls. Sorry about that, up to 999 transfers. So I don't think you'll ever run into an application that is gonna require that many transfers, but having two or three is pretty common. If the receptionist goes to lunch, or if uh, somebody is just out for the day and they're not at their desk, those calls can be transferred to whichever destination they have it programmed to in the software. This is a, a very interesting feature that we'll, we've used in a lot of commercial buildings. It's what we call our, our reception mode. And think of it as a digital receptionist. Some of you guys have walked into buildings, I'm sure, and you look up on the marquee, right? And it'll tell you, what suite, you know, every doctor is in or every, you know, insurance company, whatever, whatever's in that building, you can look up and see where you have to go. That's what this is, or it's a digital directory that you can program in and you can have it show the name of the business or just a suite number. And then you can call that suite up to, you know, with the master station in there and have them talk to you there in the lobby, release an elevator to come down and get you or however they want to, well, really, however they want to manage the traffic in and out of their building. And that's going to be done differently, right, guys, as, as we're moving forward and things are opening up, it's, it's going to be all about managing traffic. So the one caveat to this device, though, is that it is not temperature rated. So it, it has to be installed inside. So you're going to put this in some kind of foyer or the vestibule, or if they have a building lobby, that's where this device would be. It would not be outside in the elements. It will not survive. Um, as you can see here, you can upload a custom photo. So if you wanna have the, the building's logo or a company's image or your smiling face, you know, whatever you wanna put on there can be uploaded. It does have the four call buttons at the bottom. You'll notice where you can select name, select from a list, dial the number directly. And each, each one of these reception mode masters that you'd have installed there, they can call out to up to 500 different locations. So if, as long as you have a building that doesn't have more than 500 locations, you're within the limits of what this system can call out to. Because they have a, a camera on this master, on this reception mode, uh, it's still there, you can have video chat between the master stations. So if you've got one of your, your businesses there that's very you know, customer friendly and they, they wanna give the best service. They say, you know what, I, do, I wanna be able to see my visitor and I want my visitor to see me. That can be done with this system as well. We've even run into certain situations where um, certain, like the School of the Deaf here in Maryland, they've installed things like this because you know, obviously sign language is a thing. So they need to be able to see each other to communicate. 
So if you run into applications where you've got hearing impaired, this is another solution that you can, you can put on the table that will, will answer the call for them. I think I may have seen a couple of questions in the chat. Let me take a look at that before we move on to the IXG. Okay. You want to handle all these questions at the end, right, Mike? Yes, that's correct. We'll wait until we'll wait until um, you're done and Jason is done. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is our IXG series. Now, the IXG is a multi-tenant by nature, but it's it's customizable as well, which we'll cover here in just a minute. Now, you'll notice it's still on the IX platform. So it is peer-to-peer, -peer, it's PoE powered, no rack mounted servers, just like the IX, and it is compatible with our IX stations. So when you're thinking about a multi-tenant or IXG, you're gonna think about three different areas of the building that are gonna require attention. You've got your main door, right, where your visitors and even your residents are, are coming up and, and gaining access to the building. Then you've got your tenant, if I'm in my apartment or, or if I'm in my business suite, I need a device of some kind to be able to talk to that door and see who's there. And then you might also have a guard station or a, a traffic cop, so to speak, where some of these assisted living places and independent living, when a visitor comes up, they talk to the, to the front desk and then the front desk will reach out to the, to the, visit, to the uh, owner they're looking to see and you know, facilitate those people getting together. So those are the three areas that you're, you're really considering when you're looking at a multi-tenant. This is our IXG door station, our multi-tenant door station, the DM7HID. It does have a seven inch touchscreen and there is a reader, an HID reader built in down in that bottom left-hand corner, right above the A-Phone logo where it has the part number. That's where the reader's located. And it's, it's a pretty standard HID reader. It's gonna, it's gonna work in most applications that you're, you're running into. If you have someone out there though that it's using a proprietary access control system, something that they have their own readers for, you may have to mount that reader next to this panel. Um, again, reach out to your A-phone rep to see what they're working with. Most things out there we'll integrate with seamlessly and most things out there, the reader we have built in will work just fine. There is a micro uh, SD card slot that you can, you can put a uh, memory card in this door station to remember up to 999 video files. Okay, so it will, uh, it will remember its traffic coming in and out. And you don't have to worry about the screen staying lit all the time. The motion sensor that's built into it will activate the screen as people walk up to it. There is a uh, 720p uh, HD camera in that station with 170 degree field of view. Once again, it can stream into a VMS just like the IX2 we were talking about before. There are some, uh, some, some relays on the back of this station that you can use for obviously door release or any kind of uh, trigger that you might have out there at that door. And then you've got your, uh, your four programmable inputs as well. Now this is the station. If you need to have it outside, this is the one that's outdoor rated. So I know we were just talking about having the, the IX MV7 in reception mode and having that on in, in a foyer or in some kind of building lobby. But this, this is an option that will, if it's not temperature controlled, it can go right outside and it'll, uh, it'll handle the elements, as you can see, the, the temperature range down there. So unless you're in, in Canada, you should be okay. The IXG 2C7 is a hardware physical tenant station that would be installed into an apartment or a business suite. And it as well, seven inch touchscreen. And you can, as you can see the icons there, right? You can monitor um, the, the camera at the door station if you choose to, you can make a call. Now, unlike a lot of other intercoms that are like this, our IXG 2C7s can communicate between each other. So the, the old intercom, right, where it come down, dinner's ready, this system can do that as well. It's not, it's, it's not restricted to just communicating with the door. They can communicate between themselves. You can look into the history and see what, what traffic has come and gone. And you do have a trigger input there. Um, and the outputs where I've seen them used before, again, is hearing impaired if they wanna have it trigger a light so they, can, they know that someone's calling in. Um, I've even seen 
in, in other applications, these things are, uh, you know, call your A phone rep, but let's not, we're not going to get too deep into that. Go call your A phone rep. If you're, if you're putting antenna stations and you need to have it triggering lights or sirens or anything like that, and we'll, we'll walk you through it. This uh, micro SD slot for the memory card here as well. So you can record right here in the tenant space if you choose to with the same uh, memory that the door station has. This is our guard station or the traffic cop, as, uh, as I mentioned. Now, right now, this station is not available. It'll be available in the fall this year. Uh, same seven inch touchscreen, and it looks very similar to an IXMV7 master station. It'll operate in a similar way, but it does have some features that the MV7 doesn't because it is a concierge station. Now, in the meantime, if you have an application that, that does have a guard station or they wanna have some kind of security desk, we can use the MV7 in some, search, in some situations, but when it comes to transferring and calling up um, certain features, you're gonna to wanna to wait for the guard station, but it's possible you can use an MV7 in the meantime depending on your application. So again, reach out to the A phone guy in your area, let him know what you're trying to do, and, and he'll kind of steer you in the right way. And here we get to the mobile apps. This is gonna be a big thing, uh, kind of has been now for a couple of years, but I think it's gonna get even bigger moving forward. Um, again, less things to touch that are public. You know, that tenant station or the master station, even though it's at your desk, other people may touch it. It's sitting in the area, whereas people generally feel better about touching their own phone than they will anything else. So the IXG app is cloud-based, so it will work over the mobile networks. So even if you're not in that building and connected to Wi-Fi, you're riding down the road, you're sitting at home, you can still manage that door provided your cell phone has signal. Each tenant space each tenant, if you think of it that way, is a tenant space and not so much an end user, but each tenant space has up to eight apps that can be utilized at the same time. So as long as they don't have more than eight people managing that door at any one given time, then they'll be within limitations of that as well. The, the mobile app itself does have some licensing to it, and there are several different options when it comes to getting the licensing for the app. Uh, again, these are all project specific. So as you're reaching out to, uh, to your end users, find out how they want to be able to control that door and how they want to use the app, how many they want to use, and we'll be able to determine what the licensing would be for that app. But it is an RMR opportunity for integration. Um, a phone has not been known for RMR over the years, but it is here now. So it's a way for you guys to, to generate more income and, and add things to your maintenance contracts as you're selling them to your, to your uh, customer base. This is the lift, what we call our lift control relay. This lift control relay has 20 form C contacts on it and it will control elevators as well. So not only can you use it to open doors, like for instance, when you set up an A phone system and right and we're opening up a door, you don't really want to connect, if there's an access control system there, you don't want to connect the A-phone system directly to the door, right? You want to connect it to the access control system for two reasons. One, it's easier on the technician. So this device would mount right next to the access control panel, and it would connect into, a, uh, into the network switch. Then you're basically just running a jumper from this lift control module over to a, a REX input or an AUX input on your, ac on your uh, access control panel, instead of running a wire all the way from wherever that door is back to the, uh, back to the A-phone. You're doing everything at the panel. So it's, it's easier to install, but from an end user's perspective, you want all of these door openings to be remembered and managed through your access control. So if we, if we hook it up directly to the door lock, when you look at your open and close report on your access control system, none of that traffic's gonna be there because it all happened outside of the access control system. When you run it, when you hook up your door release this way, when they go into that open close report, the A phone activity will be included because it's not our system opening the door, it's our system telling the access control system to open the door. So that's kind of how you would, you want to set it up in a perfect world as often as you can. And this lift control module facilitates that. So uh, each one of these things can have up to 20 devices hooked to it and you can have 16 of them per building. 
So I doubt you'll have that many triggers that you need. If you're, if you're looking at elevator call up, you're really only, even though you, that building might have a hundred different suites in it, it's probably only got six stories or eight stories. So you're only calling that elevator to each floor. So you're not counting the, the tenants in the building for elevator, you're just counting the floors in the building to know how many of these things you may need. Kind of covered all that, so we're gonna go through here. The limitations to the IXG. 9,999 physical hardware stations. And that can be anything from the door station, a tenant station, a master, a concierge station, um, even these emergency call boxes. A lot of you guys I'm sure are seeing, uh, just like you'll see in this picture, multi-use facilities are, be, are becoming more and more common really, where you've got retail spaces on the ground floor, you might have residences or offices above that. There's a parking structure or two nearby. It might be even connected to apartments or, or owned by the same property management company where they've got apartments nearby. So the IX series, when you look at it as a whole, right? The IX2 and the IXG, it's a total platform that encompasses all of that. And as long as you've got network and PoE that's available either from to a switch or to a network drop, then you're not having to run wires to a central closet where the servers are mounted and, and trenching through you know, parking lots or whatever. You're, you're just building that, that VLAN um, any which way their IT wants to and, and installing it that way. And the, the IX will cover every one of those applications all in one platform. So it gives your customer either one hand to shake or one neck to choke, right? So this is why I say, make sure you reach out to your A-phone people and when you're designing these things and we can, we can make sure you've covered all the features that need to be there from, from an installation standpoint, making sure you've got your labor hours covered and, and you've got a correct bill of materials that you're working with. A lot of these projects are a little on the large side and can get, um, and can get a little particular when they wanna start partitioning things. And the last thing you wanna do is promise something and not deliver because you got the wrong parts in there. So we're, we're all available, you know, email, cell phones. If you, if you wanna find who your rep is, you can go to our, the AFone website, which is aphone.com, go under resources tab, and you'll see the sales team there. I'm sorry, sales, and you'll see the sales team there. Click on the map. You'll see a map of, the, uh, of North America, whatever region you're in, and your, uh, your AFone rep's information is right there. So go to aphone.com if you're not sure who it is you want to talk to. A couple of the features of the door station um, that we're going to run through real quick. There is a, a 10 key uh, like a phone pad where you can dial a unit um, individually if you know which unit you're going to. You can also have a tenant list, okay? And that list can be either a name or a number, whichever they wanna, whichever they wanna have. Obviously, if you're using unit numbers, it requires less programming, right, as people come and go. If you're using a tenant name, then those names need to be updated as the tenants change. Now that's, that is an opportunity though for integration to have maintenance and support to where if you guys wanna manage that for your end user, or you can always let your end user manage that themselves. Um, you can also have an access, it's an access um, keypad built in to where your tenants can put a code in to, uh, to access the system themselves to release the door. You can change the language if you choose to. Uh, I believe there's seven or eight different languages at this point. Uh, there may be firmware in the future to add new languages, but uh, right now we are, we're into the seven or eight there. Most of us um, in this particular part of the country, English, Spanish is, is probably the most common, but in other parts, you guys may need other things. Just like the, the IX Series 2 uh, master station where you could upload an image, you can upload an image to this door station as well. So if this building has a logo or it's got a name or if it's you know assisted living and they want their, their image out there on that door station, you can do that by simply uploading a PNG file. And that file will display on the door station and when they come up and, and, and the motion sensor activates it, they can touch the screen and get into the dialing and how they wanna reach whoever they wanna call. The, the 2C7, again, this is the, the physical master station couple of the features here, right? The 2C7, again, seven inch touchscreen, and they can communicate between each other. So if you wanna have up to eight of these in any one suite or apartment, that's your limitation, up to eight. 
and they can again communicate to each other. You can set them up to it's that touch screen is kind of like a GUI interface. So you can you can set it up to call and, and program which stations you want it to call. You can also monitor the door, call the guard, or even recall an elevator if you if you decide to. Now, one thing about the mobile app, I kind of want to touch on why we're dealing with this 2C7. Um, if you we do have the RMR on the mobile apps, right? We just talked about, but if they purchase a physical master station, there is no arm or a physical tennis station. There is no more RMR on the uh, app. They get the apps for free. So with each tenant station, you'll get eight mobile apps at no charge. Again, application specific. So if you're, if you're dealing with your customer and they just refuse to do monthly service, you can put a tenant station in and it'll still allow them to be able to get on their phones and use their apps without that monthly service going in. Um, as far as history, it's a little screenshot here where you can get into the history of, of the events that have happened and look at the video uh, that, that, you know, took place when those events. Yeah. Your language, ringtone, brightness, all of your different settings, of course, are right there. This is the IXG app. Now, technically, there are two mobile apps, and I, I don't want to get too confusing here. But in certain applications, they may tell you, I don't want my mobile app to be used on a cloud. I don't, I don't want somebody sitting at home opening the front door to my building. If that's their concern, then you'll use the IX2 mobile app, which requires whichever Wi-Fi device you're using, be it a tablet or a phone, it requires it to be Wi-Fi connected to the same network that the IX is installed on in order for the mobile app to work. If you're hearing, I want to be able to answer my door from anywhere, then you're looking at the IXG app, which is what you have here. And this is the, the uh, standby mode. So you'll see from the app, you can monitor uh, what you want to monitor. You can look at recordings lists and history. You can do the settings as well. But when a call comes in, this is what the interface will look like. And not only can you look at it this way, you can turn your phone sideways and look at the image uh, expanded on, the, on the, the entire screen of your phone. Now, what we've done kind of in, a, in, a, in, a, in an effort to reduce opening a door by accident, instead of just touching a, a single button, you'll notice there's a slide. So you'll slide that arrow from left to right to open the door. So that way, if somebody's got big thumbs or big fingers, they don't accidentally open a door on, you know, for somebody that they're not expecting to. The IX series support, uh, G support tool is a different support, it's a programming tool. This is not software. Let me just blow this all up here. This is not software that's required to run the system. It's software that you're using to program and make changes. Now, from the installation side, from an integration side, you guys can make those changes too, provided you have access to the network and access to the system, uh, either remotely or if you want to you know, send a technician out. But property management has their portals as well. So if they want to do some of the management of their own, they can do that as well through that support tool. A lot of that is going to be determined by how you sell that project and what rights you want to give to your property manager or if you guys are going to do all of that yourself. So some of that stuff will be project specific and it'll determine what kind of RMR or maintenance that you're, you're having on that, that particular contract. So when you're talking about putting together an IXG series, there's a few things that you want to kind of keep in mind and some questions that would be good questions to ask so that you, when you're when you're talking to either the A-Phone rep or even ADI Systems Group, who's, you know, gets trained on this stuff, too, and I'm sure they'll cover that in just a second. These are some of the questions they may ask you. So while you're out there looking at these these applications, don't just look at wire runs. Look at, at what exactly you have there. Like you see here, how many buildings are on the system are we dealing with? How many entry panels do I need? And how many do I need per building? You know, is it 16 buildings and I need 16 panels or does each building have two? Or maybe only three of those buildings have two. So try to get an accurate count of how many of these door stations you're gonna need. Do they need a concierge or guard? Or is there a traffic, you know, cop, so to speak, that's guiding traffic throughout that building? I think moving forward, you might see more and more of this with the current climate. So that again, they're, they're managing the traffic and, and how many people are in at one time. How many tenants are in each building, okay, and, and how many tenant spaces for the two C7s do I need? And do they want physical stations, apps, 
or both. Okay, these are some people out there are going to want both and some are going to tell you, you know what, I'm not wiring the building. The whole point is to put just a door station and I want, I want everybody to be on a mobile app. So if that's the case, just try to get an accurate count of how many apartments. Uh, remember, each apartment's going to come with eight mobile apps. So you don't need to count the app users. You just need to count the apartment spaces and we'll be able to design it from there. Do they have stairwells? um leasing offices laundry areas where they might want some kind of emergency station or call station in certain parts of the country i know in new york and in boston area some of these things they need to have stations in in stairwells and in public use areas for emergencies and in different different territories there's different building codes and, and different things that you have to kind of abide by but when you're putting the ix together remember it encompasses all of this so as you're getting these questions answered the ADI group might ask it, our guys might ask you. So instead of having you go back to the end user, it's best to have this information on hand. Whether this is a commercial property, residential or mixed use, will determine which series we're gonna, which stations we can use there. So just kind of get an idea of what you're looking at. And the reason why that mixed use is important is because the IX series is compatible with the IXG. It's all the same platform. There's only a handful of things that are not compatible. So you might have a regular standard IXDV door station on a commercial real estate or um, retail space that's underneath of where the apartments are. And that, that might call into an IXMV7 versus some, you know, calling into a 2C7. So kind of understand how the mixed use is going to work when you're looking at your application. And then of course, different areas of the building are going to require different stuff different components. So as you're doing your walkthrough, one of the things that um, is really, really good about a phone is if we've got people everywhere. So if you want us to to go to this walkthrough with you, if, if you're kind of new to this, or it's your first, you know, first one of these kind of projects, reach out to us, we'll we'd be more than happy to meet you on site, we'll walk it with you. And, and we always work through you. So as it's, it's your customer, it's end user, it's your end user. So if you have any any issues, we can talk about that behind the scenes. But again, if, if you're not too sure, just reach out to us and we'll come along with you. And that brings us to the to the end. I know we've got some questions. And uh, I know, Jason, you you have something you want to say. I kind of mentioned the group. So, if Jason, you want to take a minute and have a, a word? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for taking time out of your day to join our webinar today. I hope everybody is busy but staying safe out there. Uh, I'd also like to thank Steve and John with APhone. Uh, and of course, thank you to Mike Maskin for putting this training series together. Uh, my name is Jason Harps. I'm with the ADI Systems Design Group, and I am the manager for our AV and communications team. For more than 25 years, ADI Systems Design Team has provided our customers with recommendations and the best practice knowledge to ensure successful system integration. Our team of experts is here to help you on all your system integration needs from 8 a.m. Eastern to 8 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. Please give us a call or email us. We'd be happy to assist you with any A-phone or any of our huge selection of low-voltage products. Our phone number and email information can be found on our website at adiglobaldistribution.us or follow us at ADI Global on our Facebook page or on LinkedIn. We also have a systems design team in Canada to support the line of products that they also carry up there in, in Canada. With that being said, I'll turn it back over to Mike and John for some Q&A. Thank you. Okay, hey Mike, do you want me to type the answers in here? Are you gonna like record this and send it out or do you just wanna kind of answer them as we go through? What's, what's best for you? Wonder if we lost Mike. I'll tell you what, guys. I'm going to answer your questions as I see them here, but I'll also type the answers in uh, so that you know if you want to get a copy of this, maybe Mike can get it out to you guys. So, uh, first question: To which NVR brand uh, these cameras are compatible with? Just about anything Onviv Profile S or RTSP. Uh, there are a few proprietary brands out there. I. I can't go through like a list of them with you now, but if you can, you can bet that most of what you guys are using out there, if it's a reputable camera, 
Uh, and again, it's Envoy Profile S or RTSP, you should be good to go. Um, there might be certain settings in those cameras, depending on what they are, that need to be either turned off or turned on. But all that stuff's in the, in the programming of, of the uh, camera system and the intercom and can be done by the technician. Uh, next question, uh, Ruth for controls for hand wave touchless. Now this is, uh, answering this question is interesting. Because of the current climate we're in, Aphone came out with this touchless uh, solution very, very quickly. So yes, RCI has uh, helped with the back box and this is the first version. It will, this, this touchless will be upgraded and you'll see a version two and probably a version three of it as, as we move forward. But with the time constraints, with things opening back up, it was the quickest way to get something to market to be able to satisfy that need, uh, especially for people that might already have a phone systems installed and they just wanna make it touchless. There's a lot of IX that's already installed out there. So you, you might get calls to say, hey, can you put something on this where they don't have to hit the button? Again, I, I urge you to reach out to your iPhone rep. This is not a device you can purchase today, but you should be able to, to get your hands on it by June 7th, June 8th, and, and be able to get that uh, out to whichever site you want to have it. Next question is about the towers. How are the modular towers stationed to the ground? Normally, um, what, what they'll do is, again, depending on what the ground looks like, you'll see them pour a concrete, uh, a concrete pad and there will be bolts um, that are bolted to that concrete pad. So they are the the bottom the bottom stanchion is bolted to that is bolted to the ground, and then each stanchion is bolted together on top of that. And will the wave? Next question is: Will the wave to call be at the Arizona ADI Expo in September? I don't know. It's very possible. Um, the rep that works that area is a guy named Glenn Cali, and by September we may have some stuff that are that's out in the field already. Um, I would like to think that it would be. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. We've got some time there, but the, the short answer right now is I don't know. We can get back to you, uh, Carlos. If you can um, get my email address, if you want to shoot me an email, I can get you in touch with Glenn, and Glenn will be able to work with you locally if you want to get a look at that. Next question is the IXDM7 HID. If the network goes down, can the built-in memory still allow users to enter the building with their badge and card? If the network goes down, you've got some issues, unfortunately. Um, and, and that kind of goes for anything network-based, right? I mean, if your network goes down, you're probably losing computers, you're losing possibly your phone. Um, I don't know what kind of backups are in place, but if the, the short answer, if your network goes down, yeah, you're going to have a few issues with the, with the system getting in there. Um, having backups in place will uh, will avoid that, and that's kind of in the inf in the infrastructure there. I uh, wish I had a better answer for you, but unfortunately, that's just kind of the rules of network. When it goes down, it's down. Do we have a question? The next question is: Do we have a question checklist to start asking questions? Yes, kind of. That's that one of the last slides I showed you with some of the things you want to look at. Now, what I can do for you guys that are here. Um, I believe, Mike, you have an attendee list. If there's email addresses there, I can email you guys or, or Mike, I can send this PowerPoint to you in a PDF format so that you'll have all of these slides and you'll also have the questions there if you want to farm those out to whoever so that they can make sure they're asking the right questions as well. That's not an issue. I just need to uh, know where to send it. Yeah, and I'll have you communicate that out. I'll send you the list. Okay, and that's fine. Um, you have my email address as well, Mike. So if if, uh, if you can send that out into the group, so that everyone can get my email, they can reach out to me individually if they if they want to. Sounds good. And the last question I see here is: Is there a gate solution with the camera? Yes, uh, we've got a lot of different door stations, and they can be mounted either to a wall or to a gooseneck or a podium of some kind, or a, I'm sorry, a pole of some kind. I've even seen our towers before where you'll put together a two module tower. Um, let me kind of see if I can back up here real quick and show you what I mean. Sorry guys, bear with me. But we can do a couple different things depending on the gate. Wow, this is just taking forever. Excuse me guys, we're gonna do it this way. Here we go. Now you see the towers here. If you want to use our towers as a pedestal, you can put together 
a two module tower and put your put your station right there. Again, it is going to be site specific, right? How close are you to your gates? How does this you know fit in? Um, all of that stuff is, is going to be determined by the site. But if if you have a gate, I mean, we we put stations in at gates all the time. 